Hello everyone, this is part 24 in the Complete Platformer. Today I'm going to show you in the most basic sense how you can have decisions your player makes in the game affect your overall game state. The way we'll do this is to first set up a global flag based on a decision we may or may not make in the game, uh, toggle it based on that decision to either true or false or to whatever you want it to be, and affect the game world as a result, and then also saving and loading that flag along with the other data that we save and load about our game already. Now our game is called Respecting the Rules, and it's about going into a park where the rules are that you're not allowed to murder everyone, but then, then you murder everyone. Um, and I want to maybe provide an alternative route through the game where you don't murder anyone, give you a way to actually respect the rules um, in a way that uh, slightly tricks the player, because at the moment uh, you see a gun, you just naturally want to pick it up, it's a video game, so you'll, you'll probably pick that up. But I want to make it so that, say if you just ignore the gun, you don't pick it up, you read the, read the sign, you respect the rules, and you go through uh, the game, uh, none of the enemies have guns either, and the enemies can't kill you, and you can't kill them, and you just hang out and have a nice time. Uh, I think that would just be kind of a funny uh, alt pathway to have through the game, so we're going to do that. Um, it's really straightforward, so this is hopefully going to be a quick, quick part for you guys, and it's mostly um, using code that's very self-explanatory. Okay, so we're going to go first of all to O Game and go to the Create event, and just up here with our other globals, we're going to introduce another one called Global Dot Has Gun, and I'm going to set it to equal false because you don't start the game with a gun; you have to pick it up, right? And so O Game is created uh, back, right back in the menu, um, just when the game first starts up. So we know this is always set to false from the get-go, okay? Um, then what we want to have happen is when we pick up the gun, we can set has gun to true. And if we don't pick up the gun, obviously it's going to stay as false. And then all we need to do is later in the game, just refer to this to know whether or not the player ever picked up the gun. Okay, so I'm going to go to O gun pickup, the object in which we actually pick up the gun and the collide event with the player, okay? And before, and it's quite important based on the way we're gonna do this, before we create the gun and before we destroy um, this instance, we wanna set global.hasgun to equal true. The reason we're doing that before is because in every room onwards, we create the gun by placing it in the room so like in here, we place it here. And what I want to do is have the gun just say on creation, if that variable is true, then, uh, oh, sorry, if that variable is false, then just destroy the gun because uh, we're not meant to have a gun because from the, the past level, we didn't have one. And this is the nice thing again about global variables is they are persistent. So they can be read uh, not only by any object in the game, but they, they persist from room to room. Okay, so when we come from one room to the next, we can just check, oh, is global has gun true or not? You know, did we pick up the gun and whether or not to spawn the gun? Um, obviously, if we were to have checked this variable after, uh, if we were to do this this way, then um, that would be too late because we'd be creating the gun and then the gun would instantly destroy itself because it would see that this wasn't true. So that's why we need to put that there, okay? Now let's actually go in and put that line into O gun. So go to O gun and go to the create event and in here just say uh, if global.hasgun equals false instance destroy and bracket close bracket semicolon okay simple as that so if that's not true we just destroy the gun every time it's made but we set it up on picking up the gun in the first place before making the first one so it'll become true when we collide with this okay then what we want to do is make it so the enemies don't have guns either. So go to OE gun and just do the same thing in the create event. If global.hasgun equal false instance destroy. So they just never exist. And because all the logic for firing and stuff like that happens in the gun, uh, that solves the whole thing. Let's go to O uh, player and go to the collision with O enemy and make it so at the moment you walk into an enemy and uh, they kill you, maybe they tackled you to the ground or something, I don't know, whatever you want to imagine happened. Uh, but if you don't have a gun, you're no threat to them, they've no reason to fight you. So I'm gonna say if global.hasgun uh, equals true, or you, what you can also do um, is just do that because that'll, because if, if it is true, then this will return true, and so the if statement will just go ahead, okay? That's another way you can do that kind of thing. And all the same for doing that, we'll just check to see if it's false, okay? So you can either just write if global.hasgun, or you can write equals true if you want to be really, like, specific about it, okay? 
Okay, um, so we'll run that just to make sure that that works and then we'll demonstrate the saving and loading. That's really simple, it's just adding another variable into each one. But I'll just go to new game. Um, so we pick up the gun, run on through as usual. Please don't murder anyone. We come through here, the guy has the gun. You shoot, well, he would have shot back, but I killed him too quickly. But he's fighting on as regular, so this guy is still here. Cool. Um, then if I restart the game, uh, go to new game. Uh, this time we ignore the gun because we know the rules of the park. Maybe I should put the sign in earlier, right? <laughs> By now it's too late. Too late for the player to make that choice. But we come into here, um, these enemies don't have guns anymore. So, and, and I can hopefully, yeah, hopefully just walk into him. No one gets murdered. We just have a nice, nice chill time in the park. Maybe you want to put something else for the player to do if they're not murdering everyone. <laughs> How else can they interact with this uh, sad, lonely world um, without a gun? But uh, I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, so that's how we do that. And if I go now into O menu uh, in the step event where we controlled our saving, oh, sorry, our loading, our loading information from the game. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep stacking this information um, into this one file, and we can do that very easily. Um, so first of all, we read uh, the target room, then we read the number of kills we have, and then I'm going to read um, global dot uh, has gun. We're going to read whatever was in the file for that global. So read a real file. Okay, so we're just going to set it. Even though our game sets it to false at the beginning, we'll, uh, when we if we hit continue, we're going to load the current status of that variable from the file. Okay, um, and then in order to actually save that in the first place, so that there is anything to read, uh, let's go to our player and room start where the auto save is. And again, just at the end, you just got to make sure you get these in the right order. So as long as we're saving everything in the right order and then reading it back in the same order, everything should be fine. So write real file global dot has gun semicolon okay now let's just test both of those eventualities out but that's really all there is to it so if i go to a new game i won't hit continue right now because the save file doesn't actually have that info in it yet that might even cause a crash i'm not actually sure um so we'll get the gun we'll come through here and just to be extra clear we'll even complete this level so we'll get some pointless murders on the clock God, damn, this guy's too hot. Okay, there we go. Never happened. He's actually really easy. You just you jump forward at the right angle. But anyway, okay, so we got three bonus murders. We come through to here. Uh, we go, well, you know, we know it saves at the start. So if I now just restart, hit continue, come back in here with three because obviously he didn't count. Um, and we still got the gun and everything working as standard. Hit new game, come through here, don't pick up the gun. We'll just go to the first level. New here, we'll do this, no gun, I've got no gun. Restart the game, hit continue. There we have it, same, no score, no gun, no no guns on the enemies. Okay, simple as that. So that's how you can like make a huge like um, consequential change to your game through a simple choice that you make right at the start, just using uh, one global variable and just storing that and just checking things and saying if that is true then do this or if that is not true then do that. Okay, um, that's all there is to it. Okay, mostly doing this just to set up the endings so we can have maybe two endings, uh, you know, one whether you didn't kill anyone when we did kind of thing. You know, it's a pretty classic game thing, right? Um, so we're going to set up endings. Uh, that's what the next part's probably going to be about. And then after we've done that, we're going to do probably a handful more episodes on polishing various aspects of this. Just little little coats of polish on things like the gun and um, some of the effects and things like that. Um, and then we're going to call it there, I think, for this particular series. And we're going to get started on something new. So I hope you've been enjoying this and learning, uh, learning a lot from it as we go. And uh, I hope you still learn a lot more from the things to come. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next part. This video and all the other videos I make are only possible because of the support of my amazing Patreon supporters, the names of whom you are seeing on screen now. A special thanks in no particular order to Bowser the Dog, Cody Hodkinson, Dan, Harold Guidry, James Grumley, Jason McMillan, Jason B, Kimo Savilampi, Mark Lintz, Matt Coat, 
Michael Ward, Mike KB, Nick Slabish, Owen Morgan, Patrick Guffey, Robert Churches, Rovan Darlan, Run, Seanathan, Stephen Hagen, Toby, TJ, Turtle Time, Zephyr Flame, and Zenanne. Thank you all for your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.